Hello, James here, and I've been making a few videos um, about my phone, the T-Mobile HTC HD2, and I've been complaining about how it doesn't work with Windows Mobile. But what I've been figuring out is that it's not really Windows Mobile, it's actually the HTC Sense software that's the overlay to Windows Mobile. Um, so what I've done is I've taken my HD2 and I've actually replaced HTC's Sense home screen with the um, SPP home screen, which um, I don't know if you guys have seen it before, but I mean, it's actually pretty cool. It um, gives you a lot of functionality. I'm just going to boot up the phone right now um, to the screen so you can see it. Now, um, some of the major complaints I've had were things like my email or my SMS text reappearing even after I deleted it. But that, I believe, was because the shell program in the Sense application or the Sense home screen wasn't properly deleting it within the Windows system. Um, that's all been taken care of with um, this new home screen because, well, it's um, it's actually not a separate application in the email and the um, the SMS text. It's actually a tie right into the Windows program. So I'm actually kind of happy now with what I have here in this um, Windows Mobile 6.5 uh, HD2. Now, one thing though is I didn't want to just throw Android out because I actually like the applications and the functionality in Android a lot better than Windows Mobile. Um, the Facebook application has more functions. There's other applications that I can um, use that I just can't find in Windows Mobile, at least not in the marketplace. And I'm not willing to go out and hack around my phone anymore because it's been taking too much time. Anyway, briefly, here's the... Um, home screen oops I'm so used to the, the um, functionality of the Android buttons I'm not used to the Windows mobile buttons anymore and just so you can see what I've installed here it's the SPB mobile shell so we can find that in the um, Windows market now not to have abandoned Android but the reason that I want to be able to use my full Windows Mobile, not the scaled down one that I have in the other videos, is because, well, the battery lasts a lot longer in Windows Mobile than in Android. And I think it's just uh, because, one, the Android subsystem seems to do a lot of read and writes in the background that these other things like, uh, like on the iPhone or Windows Mobile it doesn't do. But also, because this HD2 wasn't designed for Android and I'm running it off with a SD card, the read and writes to the SD card um, take up a lot more power. So not only is the Android not as good on power as other systems, or it seems to be that way anyway, but the way that the HD2 uses Android or boots Android actually uses more power than any other phone that was designed for the Android system. So what I've done though is I've looked on XDA developers as a last resort and I've found something that somebody did. Um, I guess this is a test because no one seems to have done it much before. And I've tried it out and it's only been one day but I've gotten a lot better battery life. And what I tried was the Darkstone Super RAM Froyo version 1.5. Maybe by the time you see this video there'll be another version. But what Darkstone has done is instead of running the Android ROM directly off of the SD card, we install it the same way we've done in all the other videos, or the, if, if you've done this before. Um, it's the same install, but what happens is he loads everything up into RAM, and it runs out of RAM. So instead of going back and forth to the SD card, the system is running out off of RAM. You might think that takes energy because it has to store it in RAM, and although you would think it um, eats up power by keeping it in RAM, it actually seems to eat up less power because it takes more power to access the read and writes to the SD card. So I've installed that right over my newly rebuilt Windows system so that I can actually boot into either one. Of course I have to boot into Windows first and I, what I've done is I've made it so that I have to manually boot into Android when I want to. So I get the benefit of both and actually I get the benefit of both in an optimized manner. So let me start up the um, Android system right now. I've actually renamed the default text so let me just type in what I called it 
and I want you to see how fast this boots up. So I'm running my Windows operating system. I'm starting my Harrods program, which is gonna boot my Android. And let's actually take a look and see how long this takes. Now, every other time I've ever tried to boot this up, it would take two, three minutes. In one of my other videos, I've actually calculated the longest time as about three minutes. The shortest time, well, 2.15, 2.30 perhaps. So in this case, the HTC screen comes on. There's too much glare here. Let me turn off. The, um, there we go. We're booted up. Let me punch in my lock code. And the system starts to load right now. And it's already responsive. I'm still loading the weather data, but that's okay. Now, I have already tweaked this phone out with all of my tweaks, uh, which includes set CPU, which I've heard doesn't work, but it seems like it's working for me fine, and also with um, Juice Defender, which is a program that's going to turn my APN or Wi-Fi on and off at scheduled times. Now, it's possible I don't even need that running. I don't, I'm not sure yet, but I've been running it because it does extend my battery life. And I've got to say, in the past, where my phone under normal usage would die i take it off the charger you know seven eight o'clock in the morning and it would be dead by about one or two o'clock just under normal use it's actually lasted over 12 hours i'm at home and i'm about to go to sleep already and it still has power left so this is a big improvement over what i was experiencing before so um, i was gonna give up on android on the hd2 I'm not saying I'm giving up on Android, but I was about to give up on the HD2 because of the power consumption from the SD card. But this changes everything, so hats off to Darkstone. If anybody wants to try um, that build, um, there, again, check to see if there's a newer one by the time you see this video. But I was looking at the forum at the xda-developers.com, and I looked for the Darkstone Super RAM. Darkstone Super RAM at forums.xdevelopers.com So, um, check back again and we'll see if um, if this changes my mind about um, switching back to Windows Mobile.